Right, my name is Brandon Labar. I've been down since 2008, and uh, I got a 30-year sentence at 85%. And trouble started very early for me. When I was about five years old, my parents separated, and I moved to a low-income housing. And during that time of my life, my mother was making reckless choices. She was living a life of prom promiscuity. And in the process, I got left with a babysitter where I would eventually get molested. So internally, I had this struggle and this battle going on in my life that I didn't want no one to see that was taking place. So it caused me to lash out and to act out. So I found myself getting in trouble very early. Then moving from, from a location to location, from one bad neighborhood to another, I found myself, my brothers and I, being the only white kids in the neighborhood, growing up in a very difficult uh, surroundings. It was a kill or be killed mentality, so I had to learn how to survive. Not having PG&E and water and basic necessities caused us to go out and to rob and to sell drugs. And now the criminal element became second nature to me, and I started living the lifestyle of a gangster. <clears throat> now I want to explain why I'm in this wheelchair, and I'm going to give you a little bit of the story beforehand. I actually gave my life to the Lord, and I was out evangelizing. I have a gift of gospel rap. So God utilized me on the street in order to reach people in a way that they could comprehend the gospel. Well, during that time, I began to get lonely because none of my friends really wanted to go to church with me. They didn't want to hang out and read the Bible. So I found myself getting lonely after multiple years of serving the Lord. Well, the only way that I can go out and participate in worldly activities was to drown the spirit out, so I found myself getting intoxicated. I lost three days of my memory, I accumulated a gun, and I went right back to my old way of living. And in the process of that, I was at a party. When leaving the party, I left with three other individuals. During that time, a drive-by took place. One individual got murdered, Another one got hit about six times, and another individual never got touched, but he witnessed the whole encounter. In the process, I got hit in the leg. I walked 100 yards until I could walk no more, and I collapsed. Once I collapsed, uh, little did I know, but between five and 10 minutes later, I would also get shot in the chest <laughs> multiple times by a peace officer with a 45 caliber weapon. And, uh, I can't tell you what it was like. I can't tell you the, the pain that I felt after being shot in the chest by the peace officer because I had already been unconscious. But what I can tell you is the pain that it caused my family. I was in a coma for two weeks. My father and my, my uh, family members had to come up and see me on a rotating table to where they can keep my blood circulating. And I was fighting for my life. My body doubled to twice its size. And the effects that it had on my father and my family members uh, still moves me to my core today. Well, after I woke up from this induced coma after two weeks, the reality of an amputation set in. When my eyes opened up, I saw one of my brothers and my father, and they let me know that I pulled through, and they're so thankful that, that I was able to pull through. Moments later, I felt the pain in my leg, and I looked down, and I noticed that my leg was gone. At that time, I still had a below-the-knee amputation. So for two weeks, I had to go through the most painful experience of my life. In my neighborhood, I had the reputation of having a high tolerance for pain, and I often showed people that. Well, during this time of knowing the consequences of looking down and seeing that my leg was gone and my life would be altered for all of my time down here on earth. It really sat in and there was no pain like the pain I experienced when they came in to do my dressing changes. As a grown man, I would find myself weeping hours before they actually had to come and do this. Because of it being open and them trying to, to keep the infection from spreading, they didn't surgically stitch my leg up. So it was actually opened up and the bones was visible. Well, each time they would take them dressing changes off, they had to rip them off in order to remove any infection. 
So uh, the pain that I experienced during that time, I can still remember it today. And the whole purpose of me sharing my story with you is in hopes that you can avoid a situation that I went through because all of this was ultimately avoidable. But this is the result of the consequences of the decisions that I made for decision making. God's given me the ability to take lyrics, to take words and put them into song. Growing up in the neighborhood I grew up in, we wouldn't really relate to a preacher who came in to evangelize, you know, like a Billy Graham style evangelism. But what I notice is when I take the elements of my life and other elements of other individuals who experienced a similar lifestyle and I put that into, into song, it really penetrates the heart of the individuals and it causes them to open up and to actually listen to what I'm speaking about. The sound is similar to, to gangster rap, what I actually grew up listening to, but the message is profound. And I would actually like to share a little bit of that with you right now. I hope and pray that you're touched by the words of this song. You may be in juvenile hall, you may be on the street, you may be at a church function and somebody is sharing this tool with you. The whole purpose of this tool is that God could reach out to you. And I hope that you really take heed to the lyrics. About to preach this lyrical sermon. Get out your seat and stop your squirming and get on your feet and nod your head. Cause right now, you're about to be learning these scriptures taught just like Spurgeon. Let's take this Bible excursion. Are you ready? Cause I'm ready. We using the NIV version. See the spirit inside of me churning. Burning the sin of my soul to consuming fires to purify you. Making me white as some snow. Before I go further, let me decrease and let the spirit unfold. It's not about me. It's all about Jesus taking total control. Inside of my speech, so as I preach, I could be mighty and bold. As I teach, I could reach out to all these lost souls. Like a young Riding his bike, who's hungry out in the cold. Wonder why he's riding, he sleeps in an alley, he's got no place to call home. He's reckless to take a necklace, cause it's all that he knows. Mama's a drunk, his daddy's an addict, so he's out of control. You call him a bum because he stinks and he's got dirt in his clothes? Sure, that pity, he's just a kid in the city who's all skin and bones. Those without sin, do me a favor and cast the first stone. That's what I thought, drop your rocks, turn your head and then go. Or show him some love and do his laundry, he could use it, you know. And give him a meal, a couple of bills before he leaves down a row. Man, that reminds me in a meeting. When a story was told by my cousin Bobby talking about a bag of his stinky clothes It gave me the chills cause it was real and it hit too close to home Right after I laughed I cried inside cause I was right in the zone Or should I say block with fools got knocked cause I was gone to some drove In OD but that was the old me who's now dead and gone Only by Jesus could it be touched so I could write you this song No more inferno because of eternal Hades is gone No more fear my future is clear forever my soul will live on Forever my soul will live on I want to thank you for allowing me to be able to utilize my gift. But the whole purpose is, in the last phrase, it's about your eternity. Where are you going to spend eternity at? That's what God is concerned about, and that's why I've been given this opportunity, to be able to reach out to you. As I said, you might be at a church function. You might be out on the street, and somebody's showing you this over the Internet. You might be locked up, incarcerated in juvenile hall. And you might have a fear, you may be shy, and you may be concerned about what somebody's going to think about you if you repeat this prayer. But I want you to know that even if you don't have vocal ability, some people who faced accidents, that God searches out the heart, and he knows your heart. And if you genuinely and sincerely repeat this prayer after me, you can be assured of your eternal salvation. Now, if you would, please repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you as a sinner in need of a savior. I repent of my sins and I need your help. I believe that you came and you took, took on the flesh. I believe that you walked as a man and you taught us the only way to the Father. I believe you were beaten and tortured and nailed to a cross. I believe that you gave up your very spirit so that anyone who called on you could receive eternal salvation. I believe that you were taken from that cross and placed into a tomb. 
I also, by faith, believe that on the third day that you resurrected. So I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can take on a new life. I know that I'm not perfect. I give you me just as I am. And I just ask for your help. So from this day forward, I will live my life in order to honor you. And I pray all this in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Now, after saying that prayer, I am confident, and you should be too, that your position of eternal salvation is now secure. I want you to know that your life is not going to be easy. That's not what I'm telling you, that everything will be peachy. It's very difficult, but it's better to suffer for doing good than to suffer for doing evil. Because one way or another, we're going to face many different trials and seasons inside of our life. But now you have the tools. So what I ask of you is, if you're in juvenile hall, sign up for the chapel services. If you're on the street, investigate. Go look around for a church that will welcome you, that is teaching the Bible accurately. But ultimately, I just ask that you get a Bible and you start reading the word and you pray and stay connected to the Holy Spirit. I want to thank you for listening to my story. And I'm excited to hear about your story. Thank you.